Excellent. Okay. Servant, thank you very much. はじめまして、デイビッド・メネットです。あのいよいよもう最後のプレゼンテーションですよね。多分皆さんお疲れになっていると思いますので、なるべく、あと、あの今朝のキーノートでいろいろ陣もカバーされましたので、ちょっとなるべく短くしようと思っています。あとあの、申し訳ないんですけれどもあの、英語で日本語でどっちにしようかって迷ってたんですけれども、あのこの内容だったらちょっと自信がなくて英語で話させてください。皆さんあのゆっくり聞いてか分からなかったらちょっと後で日本語の質問でも構いませんのでよろしくお願いします。Anyways,、um, thank you for the nice introduction. I think they covered most of it.、Um, but I've、uh, spent quite a,、uh, most of my career in IT, PC, and actually a lot of it in Japan as well. So I think it was covered in the introduction. So I won't spend too much time here. What I would like to do is tell you a little bit about Tens Torrent. I know we covered some of it in the keynote this morning,、um, but I want to talk a little bit about today、uh, what we are, what we do, and why we're here talking about Risk V today. So, Tens Torrent,、um, we've been around since 2016.、Uh, we're based in North America,、uh, Toronto, Canada, but with offices in Tokyo, Toronto, Sunnyvale, Austin. Uh, Belgrade in Serbia and Bengaluru in India. We build the most innovative AI products and we have one mission inference, training, CNN, LLMs, NLPs, so vision or language, all on the same chip, same software stack. We believe that's one of our core advantages and one of the ways that we can compete against our competitors. We'll talk a little bit about the kind of software stack we have, but we try and give our customers the ability to run. Uh, any machine learning model they want, and also the ability to program、uh, and program at the base metal itself. At the same time, as part of our efforts with AI, we've created the world's highest performing Risk V CPU technology in the world, and we'll talk a little bit about that and expand on what Jim talked about this morning. And then our CEO gave the keynote this morning, Jim Keller, and we've assembled a team、uh, of CPU engineers and AI, architect AI architects from around the world. So, why is an AI company talking about Risk V? So, this is the slide I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing. So, AI is at the heart, Risk V is at the heart of everything we do. So, if you look at today in our architecture, I'll talk a little bit about the roadmap. But in our AI accelerator today, inside our Tensix cores, which is the AI accelerator cores, actually we have five, we call them baby Risk. But we've got five small risk processors inside that are doing the calculations. This is a very different approach、uh, than a GPU when it comes to AI. So, this kind of program programmability and functionality allows each of those Tensix cores to do data movement, to do simple math, and to accelerate、uh, the machine learning model.、And、that's what we have today. As we move forward, that's where it gets a little more interesting. So, the next generation part, which we're taping out this year, Black Hole, Actually, adds on in addition to all of the little baby risks inside of all of those T's, those t e n s i x cores, we've added two rows of Risk V cores. And our belief is that the combination of general compute and AI acceleration is going to become more and more important. So, this is our first step into that. If we start to look outwards more into the future, that's where the design, our, our, our own design of our Risk V CPU. And our AI come together、uh, using chiplets, but come together in a very large,、uh, what we're calling our, our, our Grendel processor, which will combine、uh, Risk V and our AI together to perform different kinds of heterogeneous high performance computing. So, this is our plan Risk V today and through the next couple of years. We talked a little bit about our team, but it's not only、uh, we've assembled a number of people from around the world with different skill sets. And I think if we look at our CPU team, one name I want to call out, we've got people from Apple, from AMD, from Intel, from NVIDIA,、um, people that have worked in the industry and have a history of delivering high performance CPUs.、Um, one of the newest members of our team actually is here from,、uh, again, was, came here from Japan, originally at NEC. He then went to ARM, and Yasuo Ishii has joined us this year、uh, at Ten Store in,、uh, in America. So, a little bit about how we, Tens Torrent, we go to market. So, if you look at our Risk V, as I said, we've developed this high performance Risk V CPU as almost a companion chip to our AI. But again, our plan is not to go and, and create our own Risk V CPU. We want to use that technology together、uh, with our AI processor. 
However, once we've announced and we've presented to the world what we're doing in Risk Five, we've had a lot of inbound interest from uh, companies around the world asking us if they can use this technology. So for Risk Five, we are offering our technology in IP or in chiplets, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. When it comes to AI, it's across the board. We offer our AI technology in IP, in chiplets. Um, we produce and manufacture our own chip, which goes into cards, which then goes into systems, and then goes into the cloud. And we've built that all out. It's available today for customers to buy, purchase, and use. So this was covered a little bit this morning. This is our AI roadmap. So if you look at the first two, Grayskull and Wormhole, these are out today. I think it was mentioned in the keynote this morning. Things get interesting in the middle in 2023. So Black Hole, the chip that we're taping out this year, it has that row of RISC-V CPUs. Now what's interesting about AI and machine learning models, if you look at the models that run today, even on GPU or some of the accelerators, many of those operations are still leaving the accelerator, leaving GPU going through the memory, going through the host, and being run on the CPU. Our belief is that as much of that that can be done inside the same silicon, you'll obviously see the benefit from that acceleration. On top of that, when we have the RISC-V cores there in the same product, we believe that we'll be able to offload some of the things that the host is doing, potentially most of the host's work, and keep that within the silicon. That's why we call it a standalone machine learning computer. So we start with our Grayskull product, which has the mini baby risk fives in all, inside of all the 10.6 cores. We add our Ethernet fabric to, uh, to create a very big scale out um, and connect you know, chip to chip, card to card, server to server in, in a large array of devices that are seen as a single device by the compiler. And then in the generation that we're taping out with Black Hole, we add the risk five functionality, which we believe takes even more uh, and puts it inside of our product. If we go to the far right, this is where uh, we're driving towards. The future of compute is big AI acceleration and big general compute combined together. So uh, starting in 2024 with our chiplet design, our goal is to be able to offer the flexibility to combine the amount of CPU that you need with the amount of AI that you need. And depending on your workload or depending on your company or your vertical, that could change. So we're gonna use chiplets to provide uh, the best solution that's optimized for the workload that you need. So, why AI needs both RISC-V cores and AI accelerators? So if you look at the 10.6 cores we discussed, the AI acceleration cores, really good at vector calculations, really good at matrix arithmetic, large data sets. If you look at what CPU cores are ideal for, conditionality, traditional math, high performance, and robust programmability. When you merge these 10.6 cores and these CPU cores on the same die, you lower the latency, boost utilization, and increases your ML performance. So we believe that ML developers of today and of the future need both the CPU and AI cores to build dynamic models of the future that are not possible today because of some of these limitations. I think this was touched on a little bit, but if you look at, uh, in this is our upcoming black hole processor, we've got our AI 10.6 cores and we've got our RISC-V CPU cores. We can do some really interesting things because these cores are able to talk to each other. The compute that's required to be done on the AI 10.6 cores can be grouped and put on the AI, accel on the AI accelerators. The operations and the compute that is uh, better benefited by a, risk by a CPU can be put on our RISC-V cores. And as that data is calculated and moved around the chip, it talks to each other, gives the results, and that data flow architecture that we've created, you can then take uh, the operations that are designed better for the CPU and better for the uh, AI accelerators and drive them through the chip to produce a result and send it over to the next chip. So we believe this kind of integration, um, especially if we look at the startup landscape today, um, there's a number of companies that are doing AI acceleration and there's a number of companies that are doing RISC-V compute. Uh, we're one of the only companies that are doing both, and we think this provides us with a distinct advantage. This is an example of when we start to look at our future designs with chiplets. As you can see here, we, uh, this is so, sort of a rather large example, but we're showing how you can take um, a big CPU chiplet and combine it in different ways. You can combine, depending on how much AI acceleration you need, you can put AI accelerators on. 
And we've heard from customers, okay, on the AI acceleration, we want GDDR. We want memory that's not as expensive as HBM. Um, we need to make sure that you have you know, a certain amount of RAM or a certain amount of GDDR in there. On the other hand, we have other companies telling, other co customers and companies telling us, no, no, we, we would also like HBM. In fact, we have some HPC customers that want both GDDR and HBM. So we believe that as we move into the new age of chiplets, that flexibility to control the amount of compute that we have to allow customers to choose what kind of memory, what kind of I.O. infrastructure, what kind of I.O. subsystem they want, uh, that kind of choice is also going to provide an advantage and a differentiation. We talked a little bit about chiplets, but you know, the future of chiplets is simple. If you can reduce the time it takes to tape out a chip, if you can reduce the cost of the tape out, and if you can provide the flexibility, the number of companies that are going to develop their own silicon are going to increase. So we believe that by enabling chiplets and providing some core technologies like AI and CPU, um, not only is the TAM of this market going to increase, um, but we think what customers and what companies are going to be able to do with this technology also increases. So this will be something you'll be hearing a lot uh, about Tenstore and talking about in the next couple of months and over the next year. We talked a little bit about this morning, um, but our high-performance CPU Ascalon, you can see outside in the, in the demo room, um, we started with an eight-wide out-of-order decode uh, CPU, so very high performance, and we've created it in a modular fashion that we're able to scale down, and it's very composable. Um, we've had customers um, that are asking us for, depending on their, work depending on their workload and depending on their application, um, they're looking at six-way or four-way or sometimes a combination of both. Our strategy was start at the top. We believe that it's easier to create a high-performance CPU core and then work your way down rather than uh, going the other way. And we've talked a little bit about the performance that we uh, have seen so far. And this is through cycle accurate simulation. We've talked already a little bit about this. I think uh, Jim covered it this morning. Um, but this is what our Ascalon processor looks like. Uh, we're currently planned, uh, we're, we're currently moving along very well. We've just uh, recently had Linux up and running in simulation. And our goal is to have um, our next stage of the RTL complete by the end of the year. So how have customers been responding? So we're currently offering uh, AI IP, our AI hardware, and our RISC-V uh, IP in various stages. Um, last month, we were proud to announce a partnership with LG um, that has been made public. Um, we will actually have a number of other announcements coming in the next couple months. Um, we haven't been able to talk about too many of them yet, um, but what I can tell you is the interest from customers around uh, RISC-V uh, IP is real. Um, the interest around uh, AI, obviously, is, is you know, very, uh, very real right now. But what's interesting is the interest from customers around both is also there. We find that when customers come and talk to us about RISC-V, they very soon are looking at an AI solution. Or if they come and talk to us about AI, they also look at RISC-V. And we think they're very complementary. Um, people want to own their own silicon. They're looking at what companies like Tesla and what Amazon are doing, and they're owning end-to-end, -end, from chip, from designing the chip all the way to the software, and owning that complete uh, opportunity. And this is something that we're looking as a, as Tenstorn, we want to help companies achieve this. One example is automotive. So we have the ability, if you look at automotive, there's a number of solutions in automotive that are required. You have ADAS, you have infotainment. So Tenstorn is able to offer AI and RISC-V together. Um, and we've seen companies like Tesla have effectively used that uh, to own their own technology across the entire automobile. When we look into chiplets, we can reduce the cost while accelerating the time to design. It also provides flexibility. Um, let's say down the road that you have a, you, you've created a chip and you've created a technology and you need to make some changes. Um, with a chiplet approach, you don't have to then go and redo all the technology. You keep the parts that you need, and then you change the parts that you want to see improvement on. For example, you might not need to change the, the memory chiplet or the I.O. chiplet very often, but you want the latest and greatest CPU or you want the newest, uh, newest AI chip. With uh, chiplet technology, we're able to reduce the cost, reduce time to market, and provide flexibility in making changes uh, at a fairly rapid pace. Automotive companies have sort of seen what uh, Tesla is doing, um, and they do want to own their own silicon, and they're coming to us to help them develop that, whether it be AI or RISC-V. 
power consumption is critical in an automobile, and 10 store and AI technology scales from milliwatt to, uh, milliwatt to megawatt, and that's something that our customers are looking for, and one of the reasons why you've seen some of the companies already uh, jump on board with 10 store. So we haven't talked too much about this, um, but uh, we talked about having a, a, a bare metal stack as part of our AI offering. So uh, at TenStorrent, we offer two entry points into our software stack. Many customers want to take a machine learning model and just run it. They just want to take a model, run it, combine a model, make sure it works. We've had a number of customers come to us and say, okay, we see what you've done in the architecture. We, thank you. we see the um, programmability that you provided, and we want to take control. So we want a bare metal stack, similar to what CUDA is doing, but we want something that's open and something that we can go and program. So we've created something called Buda M, which is our version of, um, kind of similar to CUDA, which provides bare metal, bare metal access to our hardware and your own ability to go program those five little baby cores with inside those 10.6. So if you look at our Grayscale product, we've got 120 10.6 cores, and within each of those cores, you've got five baby risks there. So when you start looking at that's a, uh, you know, a huge number of cores that you're then able to program and leverage um, to either optimize your, optimize your machine learning model or to do something that's not a traditional machine uh, learning application. So what are we offering? How are we, you know, looking at what CUDA is doing, how are we different? So boot M advantages, we believe are advantages over CUDA. So the kernels are pure C++ with APIs, so very easy um, to program and understand. Decoupled data movement and compute, optimized compute and data movement separately, meaning that if we look inside those cores, we have functionality designed to move the data around, then do the math and control. You can control, um, in those five behaviors, you can control every part of that uh, operation. And different cores can run with different kernels, kernels with pipelines connecting them, and it gives you direct access to the SRAM and the DRAM. All of this is open. The hardware, uh, hardware map is available, and we're going to be open sourcing this later this year and invite the general public to come and use it and try it out. So, we talked a lot about why we're using RISC-V. I think most of you know it here, um, but our customers are saying when they come to us, what are the things that they're looking for? With RISC-V, fully customizable, full ownership. Whether it's IP, um, whether it's co-designing with us, whether it's purchasing the chiplets, we provide the ability for customers to own their own technology. Um, for applications like uh, AI is a good example. If you need specific data types, if you need to make changes to the uh, ISA, the ISA, or if you need to make uh, specific optimizations that other CPU vendors won't allow, we will allow that. We can help you do that. We can give you the ability to go do that yourselves. As I said, you can optimize performance for, for specific workloads if there's something you want to drive. Again, automotive is a great example. You know exactly what model you're going to run. You just want to optimize it as much as you can. Um, this is something that, again, risk five, uh, risk five and having an open architecture like we do with our AI is a good combination. And obviously, no crazy license restrictions, uh, a lot of flexibility there. We think the flexibility of risk five with the flexibility of chiplets, uh, frankly, with the flexibility of a startup, is a winning combination. All right, thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. So, um, now it's it's open for the discussion. So, so thank you. Will, interesting will, okay, presentation. Right? So I have two questions. One sure. is the data format. Yep. Do you support uh, FP64 for in uh, AI chiplet? And also, do you support uh, int 8, FP16, FP8 in uh, CPU chiplet? So great question. So in our uh, AI today, we do not support FP64. So in our in our in our AI chips today, uh, we do. Uh, FP32, 16, BFP8, BFP4, all the low precision, uh, low precision floating point data types that are required. Um, however, if you do have requirements around FP64 because of the way that we've integrated RISC-V CPUs, we do have options. For instance, if we look at the, the amount of FP64 that's required in AI, uh, in AI machine learning models of today, they're not that many. Frankly, the trend is moving towards more low precision. But even if it's not in the uh, AI accelerator itself, you can offload that to the RISC-V cores that we've provided, for instance, in Black Hole. So we do have, an, uh, we do have uh, at least some flexibility and optionality there. Um, inside our CPU, um, I, I can't answer for sure. 
I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't believe so. But again, if you look at our implementation of what we're doing with our processor, we're putting our RISC-V core together with our AI cores. So typically, if something's required for low precision data types, it would probably, it'll be handled on the uh, AI side. Okay, next question is, uh, could you show me the slide, maybe uh, 11 or something like that, that shows that the two chiplet, uh, AI chiplet with the CPU chiplet? Sure. たぶん日本語でも Yes, if I look at, if I recall, we've got on both sides and uh, data diac and then communication between the memory, yes. Mm. Okay, thank you. Mm. So given the popularity of uh, chat GPT these days, I think the ownership of the GPU became very expensive. Mm. So do you, as you talked about the uh, possibility of having your solutions becoming more customizable and fitable to uh, those applications, do you think you have uh, way of uh, proving that your hardware can be better than NVIDIA GPU, for example, for the large language model, JetSpeed T4. Sure, so I stayed away from uh, focusing too much on AI today. I kind of tried to focus more on what we're doing in the RISC-V space. Um, but absolutely, we think uh, in the AI space, one of our advantages, um, we have a few advantages, but one of them will be cost performance versus what NVIDIA is doing. So if you look at what the GPUs are doing today, um, they're using typically uh, you know, HBM memory, which is great, um, but quite expensive. Um, and there's some penalties in terms of latency that we believe there. If we look at the way we've designed our architecture, one, we have near memory compute and we're using, uh, you know, something like GDDR, which is, uh, we believe, significantly more cost efficient, right? So if you look at our solutions today, not in the future, not customizable, today, right now, um, we can offer a significant advantage when you're doing, uh, you know, big training or you're doing, you know, big generative inference. Uh, we provide a significant um, uh, cost performance improvement versus what our competitors can do because some of the because some of the choices we've made in, you know, commodity hardware that's cheaper, um, the architecture that we've done that can, uh, you know, overcome some of the differences of not having HPM, um, and that's something actually where we we perform quite well. So if you look at the customers that are evaluating us today, um, the bigger the workload or the bigger the training or the more you know, GPUs they've used or the more accelerators they need, that's actually the more where Tenstorn shines um, because we offer the more compute you need, um, the more cost performance advantages you'll see using Tenstorn. Okay, so, so following your question is, uh, uh, unlike the uh, small uh, automobile or other applications, uh, you know, data center application for the large language model, requires a bigger uh, uh, collection of uh, GPUs or mm -hmm. server designs, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, more than thousands of yep, servers. Yep. So do you think uh, the Tenstorms is ready to make those type of big scale uh, uh, server solutions to compete with NVIDIA? Sure, so I think there's two things to look at. Oh, there's no screen here. So if you look at the, um, if you look at our roadmap, our, our current generation wormhole, so we've designed it with sort of an Ethernet, an Ethernet fabric that's around it. The whole point of designing that is a, it's basically a scale-out um, it's a scale-out computer. So what you can do is using the, using the Ethernet mesh, you can connect again chip to chip, uh, card to card, server to server, and you connect in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, what's seen by the compiler as a single device. So what that means is if you have the need for you know extremely large training, training or extremely large generative inference, um, you can scale out. And by the fabric that we're using to scale out you don't need expensive latency-inducing NVLink switches or Mellanox switches in between. You can connect them all together kind of like in its own sort of mesh. Um, so sh long answer to a short question, uh, absolutely. So if we look at the interest that we're seeing from our customers today, it's precisely that we can provide that sort of scale out is where we're seeing a lot of interest. Um, you get a cost performance. You remove some of the, you know, you remove some of the latency and additional cost adders like switches. And that's something, frankly, again, where we can show a pretty significant advantage versus the competition. Thanks, Peter. Hi. Go, Gandhi. More questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
、最近が話題になっているのはあのチャット GPT の話で、はい、あの聞きたいんですけれども、あの GTP あの一回であのトレーニングというかあの大規模の訓練というかあの数ヶ月かかるという話をよくあ,、ねはい、あのリスクファイブってそれにあの要は、えー、チャット GPT のトレーニングに。対応する技術とかどういうふうな考え方やっぱりその時間がトレーニングの時間が退職しなきゃいけないというふうな話になるはずだと思うんですけれども、うんはい、リスクファイをこういった分野でどういうふうに活用していくどういうふうにそうですよね、うん、今,の今のモデルですと、まあ、例えばあの弊社が今作ろうと考えているのはグレンド、まあ、そういうあの AI と CPU をくっついたあのチップなんですけれどもあのそんなにあの変わりがなないいかもしれないです、まあ、多少あると思います今あのさっきちょっと申し上げたように今のモデルでも、まあ、GPU であろうか Excel でも結構そういう CPU のオペレーションズが、まあ、大体一つのモデルに 30%40% 実はあるんですよ。ということはあ GPU でも Excel でもあ使ってないんですよね。結局 CPU に行ってあのコンピュータして戻ってくるわけ。でそれ RISC-V も同じ AI とくっつくとまあ、確かにその同じシリコンあの同じパッケージの中であの計算ができるので多少速くなるそれよりもあのあの弊社のあ AI のチップが例えばそういう何ヶ月をまあ半分にするとかあの3分にするとかそれも実際今できるんですねまあそれはまあ今の話ただ将来の,あの可能性が非常にあるとも高いともなぜかというと AI のモデルの特徴がもうすぐ変わるんですよね今のモデルはたまたま GPU、まあ、たまたまという言い方なんですけれども、まあ、ハイリーパラライズの GPU があの結構パフォーマンスが出るんですけれどもあの次のモデル新しいモデルがそうとも限らないんですよねもしかして次のモデルが、まあ、CPU の方があの快適とかエフィシエンスになるあの可能性があるので,で割とそういうエフィシエンスのハードウェアを作っておかないとフレクシビリティがあるハードウェアを作っておかないと次のモデルはどうなるのか予想できないんですよ。誰も予想できない。なので、あのテンストーンのミッションが、じゃあ、モデルは必ずこうなるとかではなく、今のモデルを見て、そのハードウェアにあの作るんではなく、まず、フレクシビリティがあるハードウェアで、モデルがどの方向に行ってもあの、ちゃんと対応できるハードウェアを今作る概念なんですけれども、その中では確かに、あのジェネラルコンピュー、リスク5みたいなあの CPU が、もしかして、フューチャーのモデルにも結構効くんじゃないかな、エフィシエンシーが出てくるんじゃないかなってやっぱり予想しています。But no one knows. Thank you. You're welcome. ありがとうございました。今日最後までてやっとこう横綱の CPU が出てきたんで安心しました。一<笑>個だけ質問です。はい、この横綱の CPU の TDP は何ワット想定されてますか。ああ、何ワットは。あのまだごめんなさい、何とも言えないです。あのちゃんと、何と言えばいいのかな、あの弊社 IP では、まあ、かなりコンフィグラブルなのであの、結構それなりのお客さんが、まあ、決めることはできるんですね。弊社が考えているグレンドルというその AI と CPU をくっついて、かなり、まあ、それなりのパフォーマンス、高い高パフォーマンスがモデルあの、ハイパフォーマンスの,あのなんていうかな CPU と言ってるのかな、エクサドリーと言ってるのか分からないんですけど、なるんですけれども、なんていうのかな、正式に発表されてないんですが、パッケージをちゃんと考えて、今のサーバーとかのシステムをちゃんと考えてるっていうことを言っていいのかな、なので、そういうちょっと変なあのリアリスティックではない数字にはならないんですけれども、あの多分さここまでしか今,今のところ話すしか話せないと思うんですけれども、まあ、ちゃんとパッケージもあの TDP もパワーも考えておりますのであのまたあの発表できるときはさせてください。ご清聴ありがとうございます。はい Thank you very much. ありがとうございました。